Hello and welcome to this video. So in this rather short video, I'll be doing three very example, easy examples of the differentiation of inverse trigonometric functions. So without any further ado, let's just you know get right to it. So this will be a fairly short video. There's nothing too fancy or going on here. So let's get right started. So the first example. Suppose I tell you that f of t is equal to 4 cosine inverse of t, or arc cosine, minus 10 tan inverse of t, or arc tan, it's the same thing. Okay, now, using a t or x doesn't matter, the formulas hold exactly the same. So if you remember the derivative of arc cosine, so just to refresh your memory, the derivative of the arc cosine of t, well, by definition, that was equal to... <coughs> Excuse me, that was equal to minus 1 over the square root of 1 minus t squared. And then the derivative of the arc tan of x, or rather tan inverse, it's, it's the same thing, it doesn't really matter, is equal to 1 over 1 plus x squared. Okay, so if we go ahead and use these formulas, well, there's nothing really too special here. So if you go ahead and differentiate this, we get f prime of t is equal to 4 times the derivative of the arc cosine of t. So if you do that, we get minus 1 over the square root. So let me just fix my writing a little bit. The square root of 1 minus t squared. Okay, and then we have to subtract minus 10 times 1 over uh, 1 plus t squared. Okay, well, at this point, we can just, you know, combine the constants. So we just get minus 4 over the square root of 1 minus t squared. And then here, we get minus 10 over 1 plus t squared. So there's nothing too wild about this. So we're done. So that is our first example done. Okay, the next example is we have to do use a little bit of chain rule. So let's get right to it. Okay, so the next example says, suppose I tell you that f of x is equal to uh, the cosecant inverse of e to the x plus 1. And you're asked to calculate what f prime of 0 is. Okay, well, there's nothing too inherently difficult about this. We just have to calculate the derivative and, derivative and plug in 0. So if you don't remember the derivative of our cosine, you can go back and watch my previous video. But in general, f prime of, okay, so the derivative with respect to x of arc cosine of x, or arc, not arc cosine, arc cosecant of x is equal to, in general, it's equal to minus 1 over x times the square root of x squared minus 1. So if you don't remember this, you can go back to my previous videos and watch this, but should be this should be fairly straightforward. Okay, so now we just take the derivative, and we have to use a chain rule because we don't have an x there. So if you use the chain rule to differentiate this, well, we get f, f prime of x is equal to minus 1 over e to the x plus 1 times the square root of e to the x plus 1, all squared, minus 1. And then we multiply this by the derivative of the inside. Well, the derivative of the inside is just going to be e to the x. So there's nothing too special about that. So let's just kind of simplify this a little bit. So you get e to the x, and in the bottom we get e to the x plus 1 times the square root of e to the x plus 1, all squared, minus 1. And then we evaluate this at x equals 0. This, this kind of notation just means I'm going to take this value and evaluate this at x equals 0. So there's nothing too inherently difficult about this. Okay, so that means f prime of 0 is equal to all of this evaluated at 0. So if you go ahead and do that, well, let's take a look. e to the power of 0, well, that's 1. Then that's going to be a 2. So 1 plus 1, so that's a 2. And then here, we get 2 squared, which is 4, and then 4 minus 1. OK, so this is equal to 1 over 2 square root of 3. OK, so that's not too bad. So that was fairly simple. Cool. Okay, so let me just check to make sure that's right. Oh, wait, no, I made a, I made a typo. So that's going to be a minus e3x, that's going to be a minus 1, and that's going to be a minus 1. I don't know why, I don't know why we put a minus 2 there, so that's not right. So 
there should be a minus one here as well. Yeah, okay, that's good now. So let's just double check all that, and we are good. Okay, so now we're good. Okay, so that takes care of that example, and the last one is it's a little bit of it's a little bit harder, but there's nothing still too inherently difficult about that. So the last example is show that the derivative of x arc sine of x plus the square root of 1 minus x squared is equal to the arc sine of x. So we have to show this. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, okay, we can go ahead and differentiate each piece. So we get the, the derivative of x arc sine of x plus the derivative of the square root of 1 minus x squared. And we have to show that this is equal to arc sine of x. Okay, well, how do we do that? Well, let's go ahead and differentiate the left side. Well, so if you differentiate the left side, we get x times the derivative of arc sine of x by the product rule. So we get 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. And then we add this to arc sine times the derivative of x. But the derivative of arc sine is just, well, 1. Or, sorry, the derivative of arc sine is just, well, as is. Uh, wait, no, let me correct that. So we get x times the derivative of arc sine, so that's this part, plus this times the derivative of x, and that's this one. So sorry about that, I just mixed up my wording a little bit. So we get arc sine of x times the derivative of x, which is just 1, so we can just write it as arc sine. And then for this part, we get the derivative of the square root portion. Well, that's just equal to, well, if you go ahead and use the our rules, that's going to be the derivative of 1 minus x squared to the 1 half, and that should be equal to arc sine of x. Okay, so now if you go ahead and do that, well, let's just take a look. So at this point, we get x over the square root of 1 minus x squared plus the arc sine of x. Okay, but then if you use the power rule, oh, I'm going to chain rule on this question, we get 1 over 2 times the derivative of the inside. So this is going to result in times minus 2x on the top. And then on the bottom, the square root comes down. So we're just going to get 1 minus x squared. Because remember, we have to subtract 1 from the top. So we get 1 half minus 1. But that's just minus 1 half. So this square root goes to the bottom because we just get all of this to the minus one half so it just you know goes to the bottom so nothing too crazy going on there okay so this is equal to arc sine of x and then these two cancel and uh, so we get x over the square root of one minus x squared plus the arc sine of x and then we get minus x over the square root of one minus x squared plus the arc sine of x but then of course these cancel so that's really nice and then we just obtain that arc sine of x is equal to arc sine of x but i mean that's what we wanted to show so we're done so we have now shown that the derivative of the arc cosine of x, sine of x times x plus the square root of 1 minus x squared is arc sine of x. So you have shown that the left hand side is equal to the right hand side. And so with that, we are essentially done the proof. So we're done. So nothing inherently too hard. So we just have to be a little bit careful with the algebra. So as long as we remember the algebra, it's not too bad. So that's it for this video. So in the next video, we will be talking about a few other new topics. And if this video helps, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any questions, just leave it in the comments, and I'll be happy to answer them when I can. Have a great day.